What's up, everyone? Um, here's another episode of the GamerCast. It's going to be another solo episode. Didn't have enough time to get another guest on, so I'm going to just be here to talk to you about gaming consoles. This episode is mainly focused on gaming consoles. I know I gave a lot of the PC... You know, a lot of my stuff is PC gamer tech because PC because PC tech comes out very often. But we're coming across a new time, like a time and place where new consoles are about to come out. 2023 is already more than halfway through 2022. PS5 is coming more in stock. The Xbox Series, all the Xboxes are pretty much easy to get now. Nintendo Switch is coming to the end of its life. So it's time for newer consoles, and some t either the most um, controversial. This is actually one of the most controversial things: is the pro consoles. And you know, some people do not like knowing that Sony and Microsoft are going to make pro consoles. But I'm going to say, I feel like this generation they need to make a pro console they really do need to make a pro console unlike the last generation they kind of made a pro console because the ps they it was their own fault because the ps4 and the xbox one was just way too weak even when it first came out but this generation the ps5 and the xbox series x the x by the way not the xbox series s the xbox series x were actually very powerful like they're very powerful they're around the power of a mid-range pc but um pc gaming is the next gen of pc gaming is about to make a massive jump and sony and microsoft don't want to get left behind they kind of like using that advertisement that they are to, they are as powerful as a mid-gen pc and you don't have to spend a thousand dollars to game at 4k you know 4k at high fps so and nintendo is also making a new gaming console because they have to literally because nintendo is being forced to that is the only reason why we're getting a new nintendo console one because nvidia refuses to make their old chips for nintendo um TSMC refuses to also make it as well and of course the Steam Deck which was a very good mainstay on the GamerCast last year we we're talking about the Steam Deck the Steam Deck is doing very well man they can't keep that thing in stock I mean let me look it up how many how many Steam Decks sold how many Steam Decks have been sold Wow. So, since its launch, Steam is averaging 13,000 Steam Decks sold a week. For a company as small as Steam, this is very good. I'm happy for Steam that this is working out because this is going to also make, um, you know, oh, they've already sold 12 million. That's very good. That's very good. I'm happy. I am happy for Steam. I'm happy that this is doing well because, I mean, honestly, it's a gaming PC on the go. You can literally game on it and you can make it your PC like straight up. You can connect the mouse and keyboard to it and it can be like a laptop. But we're not talking about the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is already out, so that's not what we're talking about. We're going to start talking about next gen consoles. So, well, next gen for Nintendo, mid gen for um, PS5, for the PS5 Pro, and the Xbox Series Z. That's what I'm going to call it. So, first, I'm going to start off talking about the, X, the PS5 Pro, the Xbox Series Z, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you are here to hear about this. So, the PS5 Pro and the Xbox Series Series Z, I'm hearing that first, I'm going to just say this right now, guys. You, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me. But the PS5 Pro and the Xbox Series Z are going to be stronger than a... They're going to probably be stronger than 3090 and a 
6900 uh, XT. I know it sounds ridiculous. You cannot imagine. How is that possible? Well, what you guys got to understand is that next generation, when Lovelace and RDNA 3 comes out, which comes out this year, by the way, mid-range of Lovelace, which is the 4070, and the mid-range of RDNA 3, the 7700 XT, will be as strong as, guess what, the 3090 and the 6900 XT, maybe even slightly stronger. Well, I won't even say maybe. I'm actually hearing is they are going to be stronger than it, probably like 10% stronger. And what do they compare if you look up comparison videos, what do they compare to PS5 Pro and the Xbox Series Z? I mean, the Xbox Series, I mean, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X to. They compare it to a 3070, a 7900 XT because they used the mid, they used the, um, the mid-range die of RDNA 2, which is around the power of a 3070 between a 16, you know, 3070, 6700 XT, around that area of performance. That is what the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are. That's what they were aiming for. And what I'm hearing is that they're aiming, Sony and Microsoft are sort of at a crossroad because they have to they have to come up with something because right now the ps5 and the xbox series x are selling but the thing about it is it's getting to the point that they want to create a console that they can sell for around the same price as a ps5 it's around the same price as what the ps5 and the xbox series uh z are but actually charge probably a little bit more probably a hundred dollars more so so they're saying what is the performance that we could go that we could charge more but people will be happy with and able and be wanting to spend because right now sony and microsoft are not making that much money off of a ps5 the ps5 and the xbox series uh x because of vram vram right now is very expensive it's not as expensive as it was last year but it's still expensive they're not making as much they're not making money off of these consoles so they kind of want to charge a little bit more by using parts that will probably cost the same but charge a hundred dollars more because it's more powerful you get what i'm saying so they're aiming to use rdna3 mid-range rdna3 and uh, uh, Zen 3 probably Zen 3 I want to say Zen 3 they're probably going to use Zen 3 plus probably put Vcash in it because Vcash really helps with gaming so they're probably going to add that too I can definitely see them using Zen 3D in their thing probably just basically um, their APU the APU which is basically a, a CPU and the you know see there's the CPU which is the uh, there's the CPU and there's the graphics card APU is pretty much both of those combined together. Xbox and Sony has very powerful APUs in them. So I'm pretty sure they're just going to basically use a 5800X 3D and a 6900XT. Like pretty much if you have a PC right now with a 5800X 3D and a 6900XT in it, that is going to be the PS5. The PS5 Pro at the end of next year, beginning of 2024. Or they could use RDNA 4, which I very much don't recommend because Sony and Microsoft might want to push for 8K60, which I pray to God that they don't. I rather that they say that they can game at 4K 120. I want the next gen consoles to game at 4K 120 because once they can say they can game at 4K 120, they can pretty much end the argument of it can also make uh, people who are console gamers not have to fight with PC gamers because they say, oh, yeah, we can game at 4K 120 just like you guys, because another way that they're going to be able to do that is this thing called FSR that's coming out very it's already out, but it's going to be coming to console soon because FSR allows you to um, basically upsample whatever you're gaming at for example you might say you want to game at 4k 120 but you're thinking only really game at 1800p 120 so what the what 
FSR will do. It will upscale that 1800p image to a 4K image so you can game at 4K. So the image looks like it's 4K. It's not actually 4K, it's 1800p, but it looks like 4K to your eyes unless you get up directly to the, the monitor and look at the individual pixels, which you'll be weird to do that. But I feel like that is the future of gaming consoles. I feel like very soon, we're gonna start hearing about. Uh, we're gonna start hearing more rumors about the PS5 Pro and the Xbox Series Z because that's what I think is the next thing. I mean, I already said I have no interest of buying a PS5 Pro or Xbox Series Z unless it can do 4K 120. If it can do 4K 120, even if it's with FSR, I am completely okay with that. I'm fine with that. I just want to be. A, if you're going to, if you're going Sony, Microsoft, please listen. If you are going to make pro consoles, do not go for 8K60. Go for 4K 120. Do not waste your money and time going for 8K because I'm telling you right now, I don't think people are interested in 8K. I really don't. I just cannot see people being interested in 8K. But that's pretty much my thing on why I, this is how I see what the PS5 Pro the PS5 Pro and the Xbox Series Z is probably if I'm going to use if I'm going to give you all the specifications I'll say it would be a 8 core CPU probably probably a Zen 3D so it'll probably be basically a 5800X 3D it's going to have the power of like a 6900XT maybe 6950XT it's probably going I'm I don't expect it to have the same amount of RAM like 16 I think they're gonna try to go for 24 gigabytes I doubt 32 but they might go for 24 gigabytes of RAM and then the VRAM count is probably gonna be stuck at 12 because 12 is enough to game at 4k right now in most games unless you're playing I honestly I have not seen a game that requires more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM to play at 4k you know, I haven't seen it yet. Unless maybe one of you guys have seen it and you can uh, write it in the comments and let me know. But I haven't seen a game in 4K that requires more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM to play. So I would expect that, you know, maybe and that's probably what they're going to do. And, I, and probably whenever the PS6 and the PS6 and the whatever the Xbox wants to call it, I expect the PS6 to be whatever i have a 6900 xt in my pc by 2026 which i think will be around the time when the ps6 probably will start coming out maybe 2027 the ps6 and whatever xbox next gen i'll just call it they will be two times more powerful than what i have in my pc right now guarantee it they will be able to game at they will probably be able to game at 4k maybe 240 hertz honestly that's the future of console gaming and i will go from there and i'm going to talk about another uh refresh console is the xbox series v i think i'm gonna I, i'm gonna call it the xbox series v only because i don't see why microsoft would want to call it the xbox series s again I think V is a good name. I'm going to call it the Xbox Series V. The Xbox Series V, what I'm hearing is that it's not going to be as great as an upgrade as you think. It is not going to be the X. They're not turning the, they're not turning the Xbox Series X digital. So that's not happening. Basically, what they're doing is that they're going to basically double the performance of the Xbox Series X, I mean Xbox Series S, which is not saying much. I'm just telling you guys, the Xbox Series S is a crap console. It's not very powerful. It's not as powerful as you think it is. Do not fall for Microsoft's marketing. It is not a powerful console. It's basically this console, the, the next console will probably be between, probably, if I had to guess the number, probably about six to eight teraflops. It will be able to game at 1080p 120 FPS very easily in probably all games. Maybe for 1440p, maybe 60 
it may it with FSR might be able to get 1440p 120. What I'm hearing is that the Xbox Series, and by the way, guys, this is not this is not rumor. This is from what I'm hearing from leakers and me making assumptions of what I think Microsoft and Sony should do, by the way. So back to what I was saying. I think when it comes to the Xbox Series V, they're, they're probably going to use Zen 2. Zen 3. I mean, they're probably going to use Zen 3. Probably not Zen 3 or Vcash. They'll up it to probably an 8-core. Because 8-core, the, the 5700 x is getting cheap. So they'll probably use like this 57, around the power of 5700 x And they'll probably put like a 6600 XT. Probably around the power of a 6600 XT when it comes to graphical power, which it can kill 1080p. Play games decent at 1440p. I think that's probably what they're going to go for with the xbox series v it'll just be it'll stay probably around 300 dollars. maybe they try to get away with it by making it 350 so it'll be a much more powerful appealing console you'll be able to play next gen games much better devs will be happier with it than they are with the xbox series s which is really harming xbox's games by the way they'll just be better off from all people with this i think a lot of more people will be more happy with this console it'll be a lot more powerful it'll have much more ram probably instead of having 10 gigabytes of ram it'll probably use the full 16 thank god so you don't run out of ram playing your games jesus christ um that's what i'll say i'll say it's probably will be an eight core cpu probably zen 3 not zen 3d plus probably around the power of a 6600 xt a 30 around a 6600 xt a 3060 kills 1080p doesn't play phrase 1440p decent you know what i mean and and probably going to keep it digital probably slotted around 300 to 350 dollars that that is honestly not a bad deal but honestly I don't see the point of buying that because probably the PS4 Slim would probably be around 350 at the same time. So, I, you know, the PS5 Slim Digital will probably be around 350. So I don't see the point of buying that. You'd be dumb to buy that, honestly. But if you like Xbox, go ahead. So that is your preference. But I do not recommend that console at all. Um, and here's Nintendo. Here's the caveat. Nintendo's going to be a little bit more tougher to explain because Nintendo is a portable console that you can play at home. Right now, the the, the Switch is pretty much a 720p console. It's not 1080p. There's some games that it can play 1080p on TV because the developers are genies. They're wizards. Like they're, I don't know how the heck they were able to squeeze performance out of a Nintendo Switch of that. Yeah. But the new Switch, which I'm going to probably call the Switch 2, is probably going to, I'll say the power that it will have. It's right now the Steam Deck is pretty much a PS4 on the go it's like probably a little bit weaker but it's basically a ps4 ps4 on the go i see the switch nintendo switch 2 basically being a ps4 pro on the go you'll be able to game any game at 1080p 60. probably yeah i'll say you'll be able to game pretty much every game at 1080p 60. because they're probably going to use lovelace they're going to use lovelaces because it is I doubt maybe Ampere maybe they can maybe they can swindle Nvidia into giving them last gen which is well which is current gen now but by the time the switch by the time the switch 2 comes out Ampere will be last gen they'll probably swindle them into making and giving them Ampere instead of them using Lovelace but I'm pretty sure um, the video is going to be very 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 you know adamant about using their newest uh, thing which is Lovelace so you're probably going to use Lovelace it's of course NVIDIA is going to tell them that they have to use um, a DLSS which is NVIDIA's version of Upscaler it's better than FSR honestly and they'll probably tell them that hey with DLSS you can pretty much play 
you can you know upscale these games like for example when the switch is undocked the switch 2 is undocked you'll be playing every game at basically on a 1080p maybe 900p maybe 1080p screen i don't know probably a 1080p screen you'll be able to play every game at 1080p 60 and if you want to save battery you might drop it to 30 fps to save battery and when it's docked it upscales the games to 1440p 60 using dlss and it'll probably use ray tracing i'll say this console will probably be a 1660 super maybe yeah i'll say about a 1660 super probably around the power of a 1660 super it, it's basically a ps4 pro on the go nintendo's only doing this because they're being forced to do it but well i mean it would be nice because i'm pretty sure more people will be happy with a switch too be, especially developers because it's hell it is hell to put games on the switch guys this is why you see a lot of these old games that have already came out on PS4 and um, I mean, P yeah, basically, yeah, they've already been out on PS4 and Xbox One are coming out now on the Switch because it is hell to put those games on the Switch because, man, Switch, Switch got like three gigabytes of RAM. Just to put in perspective, the PS4 and the Xbox One had eight gigabytes of RAM. That's how far back this console is the freaking um the uh the steam deck has 16 gigabytes of ram that's what it's competing against and this is embarrassing guys because you know you can li like for like guys real talk you can buy a steam deck for 400 dollars. the switch is 300 it's 300 bucks for 100 dollars more you get more than two times the performance you get more than two times the performance it's also a computer by the way so you can literally hook up a mouse and keyboard to it now. It is not just a gaming console. It is a portable computer. Also, you can update the storage to whatever you want. You can put in a micro SD. You can put an NVMe in the back. And as well, you can emulate Switch games on it and play it better than the Switch does. There's people playing Breath of the Wild on Steam Deck at 1080p, 60 FPS, on the and on the switch you it plays at 900p 30 fps that is embarrassing this is embarrassing nintendo do better really you need to do better it's just it's embarrassing that is the reason why we're getting a nintendo switch too it's because steam is embarrassing the hell out of nintendo right now it is something that needs to be done so yeah that's my talk on the uh gaming consoles the gaming the new consoles come out i'm excited for them you know i even though i game on pc now i still do game on console i do like i have a ps5 i like my ps5 exclusives and there's certain games that i am not buying on pc like i never will buy tekken on pc that is blasphemous i grew up playing with tekken on my uh ps playstation and i will never i will never play tekken on anything else if i see if anybody off if i see tekken on the xbox someone offers me a controller i'll say get that shit out my face i'm sorry i grew up with tekken and playstation i'm not doing it anywhere else doing playing it anywhere else and of course like i said i play my exclusives and there's certain other games like crash bandicoot and other stuff and i just grew up playing on playstation i just don't see the point of it playing on uh, PC like how PC's not gonna make that game look that much better it's not you know it's just really not so um, another thing that I want to talk about guys I do want to I do want to give you guys uh, I do want to talk about resolution I want to talk about resolution because this is another thing that I feel like a lot of people do not truly understand about resolution and it I can definitely help and talk to you guys about it and tell you the misleading stuff about resolution, what resolution actually is. So just to let you guys know, a 1080p image can look better than 4K image. Yeah, I just blew your mind. I'm dead ass too. A 1080p image can look better than a 4K image. It just matters 
how you're looking at the image and it matters the quality of what the image is for example i could be looking at uh, an image of a youtube video on my cell phone and the cell phone is at 1080p it will look just as good as a 4k image on my 65 inch tv because resolution because resolution is literally just pixel density that's literally what it means it's just pixel density 1080p is nine is is 1900 is 1920 pixels by 1080p pixels it's 19 uh 1920 pixels across and 1080p 1080p pixels up that is what 1080p means which is full hd that is what it means that's just how many pixels are on on that screen 1440p is 250 yes 256 by 1440p 256 across 1440p up and of course 4k just it differs on what on what you're using if you are on a 16 by 9 if you're on 16 by 9 it is 30 3860 no 3840 by uh 2160 if you're on 21 if you're on 16 by 9 if you're on 21 by 9 it's 4096 by um 2160 that's usually cinema uses the 20 they use the 21 by 9 most home tvs uses the 16 by 9 but that's usually what it goes by and so i just wanted to get you guys to understand that 1080 just the, the difference of resolution does not make an image look better so that's why i feel like people need to understand because when i was just talking about earlier about sony wanted to go to 8k i was just telling you guys if you do not have a screen big enough you cannot see 8k unless you're cl sitting up close to that TV because the pixels literally cannot fit on the screen for you to even tell the difference in the image I'm just being honest like having a 4k having like for example having a true 4k phone is dumb like why would you have that many pixels on a screen on your phone because that's what is it what is 4k let me uh let me do the math really quick I'll start a calculator 2160 times 3840. That's 8 million, basically over 8 million pixels. God, that's a lot. And 8K is two times that. 8K is um, 7, let me, let's 3 times 2. Okay, that's 7. 7680 times 4320. That's 33 million pixels. You see the astronomical jump is four times more pixels going from 4K to 8K. You don't really need 8K is a gimmick, guys. You really don't need 8K. 8K is one of those things that you actually do not need. Do not let them fool you. When you're going out for TV shopping and you see an 8K 60 hertz TV, do not buy it. Do not waste your money. You're better off buying a 4K 120 hertz TV. It will do you. It will do much better for you because you'll be able to watch things at higher refreshes. You'll be able to game at higher refreshes. And like I said. Guys, there's barely any 4K content already. There's no 8K content, guys. There's no 8K content. They're not making movies in 8K. They're not making anything in 8K. Please, this is just a warning to you guys who are going out there to buy TVs because they're going to try to sell you guys on 8K. I'm telling you guys, 8K will be to will be the next 4K, and I'm not. I mean, the next, not the next 4K. It will be the next 3D. And I'm not saying 8K is not worth buying unless you want to buy a 120 inch TV or bigger. Do not buy 8K. You're better off spending that money getting the OLED 4K monitor, 4K TV with 120 hertz, with, with 120 hertz 
basically the full the full thing hdmi 2.1 everything on it you better off getting that than buying an 8k 60 hertz tv it's just you're just better off doing that guys i'm just listen to me it's just do that do not waste your money on 8k now i'm going to i will say though movies the movie industry is definitely going to be really good and i'm telling you guys the next 10 to 15 years movies will look better than they are on tv i don't care how good of a blu-ray you get for tv movies will look movie industry when 16k and 32k comes out movies in the movie industry will look way better than what we are, what we will ever get at home like real talk that is what's going to benefit from the higher resolutions because you see how big those screens are they can only pick so many pixels on it but when they get that shit to 16k and 32k man i'm telling you man those movies are going to look amazing i trust me the movie industry is going to look spectacular it's going to be it's going to be worth the movie industry is going to be worth going to in the next 10 to 15 years. Guarantee you. Guarantee you on that one. And um, I guess that's really it. That's really all I have to say today. I just wanted to give you guys an update on the consoles coming out. You know, the, the hated refresh consoles. But guys, don't worry. Don't feel bad that you bought a PS5 now. It's not that big of a deal. You if you if you want to hold if you want to hold on to your PS5 a little bit longer, that's fine. No one's telling you that you should buy um, a PS5 Pro or an Xbox Series Z. Just get what you want now. Do not the the level if next gen performance is good for you. The next if what is out now is good enough performance to you stick to it you do not have to go and get the latest and greatest do not fall for that that's how you break your bank that's how you do all of that you don't just just get what makes you happy if you're just okay because i know somebody that she's only okay with 1080p that's fine she's she never she's not going to be spending that much money me i'm going to have to spend a lot of money because i do I create content, so I need VRAM. So I'm going to be spending a lot of money on graphics cards for in, in the near future. But some people, they might be only okay with 1440p. That's fine. You know, I feel like we're about to hit in the next coming years. We're about to hit the wall of performance that actually where people stop giving a fuck. Because honestly, guys why would you care to game anything better than 4k 120 especially if we can get the 4k 240 like why why would you want to game any better than 240 hertz because i'm gonna just tell you guys this is 100 percent true for uh, 120 to 240 is two times better but 120 to 360 hertz is not three times better because the the faster the time the faster the frame rate goes the, the actually the slower of the frame rate um pace becomes so it doesn't actually make you move three times faster so that's why i'm saying it's just going to get to the point that even if we get to 4k 240 or 360 it's not it's, it's, it's going to get to the point that it's not even worth it anymore. What are we doing at this point? And that's the thing that I think a lot of tech companies are going to start looking into. TV companies are going to start looking into. Like, what? Why make stuff at higher resolutions and these higher frame rates when most people might not even care because like i said i mean i really think i really think 8k is not going to be as popular as a lot of people want it to be i just don't see that happening but that's just my opinion i can be absolutely wrong 8k might explode and maybe i'll get an 8k tv then because 8k tvs will be cheap by now but right now 8k tv like ten thousand dollars <laughs> but yeah, that's all I want to talk to you guys. Talk to you about that. So I hope that you enjoyed 
this podcast and i hope to see you guys in the next one uh kenny hoon out